Hello everybody and welcome to another expanded guide today. Travis and I are talking about Father Matteo, the priest. Yeah. He's a mystic uh, stat line. Oh my god, Russell. Scott, my fingers. Immediately Jesus. a bad boy. Yeah. Uh, stat line <laughs> of 4323. 6-8 for his soak. Uh, his, his ability is really good, as you can see in the strengths. Great ability. You also can mm -hmm. see he has a mess stat line in the weaknesses, which yeah, yeah. with a 4-3-2-3, three, you might be thinking that works really good with Empower Self, and it doesn't. Um, <laughs> it would be really funny if I said that this is the same stat line that Luke has. If I said that Luke has a good stat line and the Father Mateo doesn't. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. That would be kind of funny. We have to go check to see what Luke's... Yeah. <laughs> You're like, says. flexible <laughs> stat line. <laughs> um, so his ability is really good, though. Like, it's a really good ability. After an investigator reveals an, a chaos token, cancel that token and treat it as an elder sign instead. So you just turn a fail into a pot into like a super success yes and then where it gets really juicy is uh father mateo's elder sign is you automatically succeed after the test ends draw a card and gain a resource and if it's your turn you may take an additional action this turn <laughs> now like it arguably the best elder sign ability in the game yeah it, it's one of those things actually but a lot of like things fit into this the extra action that comes with it though is really nice during your mm -hmm. turn the cards and resources when you don't need the action but mostly like what it does what makes it so good is that like, you can fish for Elder Signs and other investigators, but Father Mateo's, like, whole thing is, like, a big part of his thing is that you want to, like, try to see it as much as you can. Yeah. Oh, man, his food just fed him. Uh, his deck building is Mystic Cards, uh, Blessed, uh, Mystic Cards 0 to 5, Neutral 0 to 5, and Blessed 0 to 3. So his card pool is, like, he's mostly mono Mystic, unless you have Innsmouth, which, ha which happens to also be like a lot of cards from Innsmouth, which we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, normally we gloss over the Innsmouth cards, but yeah, not today. Not for this one, no. <laughs> um, the, here's the, the, the ultimate question. Actually, let's get to his signatures first. So the Codex mm -hmm. of Ages is a two-cost hand slot. Uh, it seals the Elder Sign when it comes in play. So sealing, we're going to see mm -hmm. that a lot in this. You basically take tokens out of the bag, lock them on the card. Yep. You get plus one brain while this token is sealed here. That's sick. You're going to be using your brain for things. Mm -hmm. Downside is the Elder Sign's out of the cup. However, when you would reveal a Chaos token from the Chaos Bag, discard the Codex of Ages and resolve the Elder Sign token that was sealed here as if it was just re uh, revealed from the Chaos Bag. Very nice. I should play this guy sometime. I he, like, just looking at his cards here, I think he's a lot better than he used to be. I think so, too. I think like, so, too. With additional ways to find... So, like, you have a Codex of Ages, you get plus one brain, and then you're playing with... Uh, like, you have an inherent asset at level zero that gives you plus one brain. Yep. At the expense of the Elder Sign, which, like, kind of sucks... But you get the other sign when you need it. Yeah. And you need to put it back at the expense of your brain. And then, um, like, you're not, you shouldn't be relying on drawing the elder sign most of the time anyway, especially at lower levels till you get the spells that give you the brain boost. Mm -hmm. You know, like your level five shriveling or whatever. Yeah. So you can have, between that and Holy Rose, where you can, you can pretty easily have six brain yeah, very at, at level zero. Yeah. Um, and then also, it's like one of those <laughs> things that, like, even though you have six brain with it, you also could just, like, pass a test that you really need to pass and just be like hey this is an elder sign baby yeah, uh ants brain or foot four tests are like yeah, throw yeah. away all your cards you're like no i'll take I'll, another card instead i'll do it <laughs> uh his signature weakness is the servants of yig uh two three two uh and hits for one and one it has hunter and then it all prey is only you so everyone mm -hmm. else can be like ha ha father mateo the snakes are gonna kill you uh it seals the elder sign on it which honestly pre medium weakness yeah it's medium one of those things where it's like kind of annoying because <laughs> as a mystic your kill spell like your way to kill things is a lot less reliable than a guardian mm -hmm. so normally actually like what we see most of the time is uh father mateo someone else is like okay i'll just kill this for you father mateo and he's like thank you yeah things like a little annoying with its three health in the early game but you still get axe it'll, it'll take like you know uh, uh two hits from your shriveling or whatever to kill or yourself one spectral razor yeah one spectral razor is like your levels are a way to deal with it but late in the game when your your shrivelings and your um mm -hmm. is there flames to doing three damage this thing is just garbage yeah yeah it's more just kind of <laughs> like an annoyance who it, especially at levels where we show uh, sorry like a like scenarios one two and three if he shows up at the wrong time you're like Ugh. but otherwise yeah. it's, it's it's very manageable yeah like the, the ceiling this elder sign isn't really he's just like a guy yeah <laughs> yeah uh the bonus experience uh is sir you also get five bonus experience exists, yeah. yeah you get five uh <laughs> i think this is here just to kind of like help those investigators who are missing that little bit of juice to get a little bit of juice at the start of the game i forgot about I, this i don't i don't like that as an addition to the cards because that's like 
the designers going, we know this investigator is yeah. bad. Like, just make them better. You can yeah. do that, though. Yeah. Just, just give, give him, him like, give five him... brain or whatever. Yeah. Just <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, take away one of his, like, I don't know, book. You know, just give him, like, you know, a survivor or just, card. Or even have, like, a, or have like, like, a Mark Harrigan stat line where you just get, like, one extra point just for fun. Yeah, or, like, yeah. five cards from yeah. Seeker or five cards from Guardian or some garbage. However, like, just something. with all this said, though, it is fun to get five additional experience at the start of the game because you can kind of just, like, get the key piece for your deck. So, like, for example, if you're going to be playing around with Blessing Tokens, mm -hmm. you can grab the Covenant you want. If you're going to be, uh, I don't know, like playing he's also very good with down the rabbit hole because you basically can get started on all of the Start with uh, seven experience yeah yeah so like yeah it's actually one of those things that like with um like with down the rabbit hole in the thick of it you can take a level one version of each of the edge of the earth spells and then oh, upgrade them all for researches in there and just roll in with four brains yeah. Like, yeah and still don't die and still don't Maybe. die or if you're just like if you really want to like not think about it just put like a Deny Existence 5 yeah, in there. take all those. <laughs> spend it on upgrading your Deny Existences. Where are those for? Protect my forebrain. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Father Mateo, though, he... Um, I recently played him, and I, I played him with a Cyclo... Well, actually, I didn't play him. Twitch chat made my decks. He was part of that was one. Is this the Cyclopean Hammer thing? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It, I mean, you that still hit... Count. No, it, it, like, uh, it, but it's... Uh, he did hold his own, even, like, you know, when you are playing with just, like, a random pool of cards. And I think if an investigator can hold their own when they're playing with literal garbage, that means it's a sign that it's probably a good investigator, or I'm just, like, good at the game. I mean, like, his deck was garbage and Cyclopean Hammer. <laughs> like... The Cyclopean Hammer wasn't it. I attacked at six. It wasn't enough. <laughs> Um, but I do think that Father Mateo has the pieces, and then especially if you have, like, the strategy of knowing when to pull the autofill into the Elder Sign, mm -hmm. which you might be wondering, like, when should I do it? That's probably one of the biggest questions with Father Mateo. For me, it's, like, if it's, like, turn two and you draw it on, like, an investigate, don't do it. Just let that, let that go. If it's, like, turn eight and it's a crucial mm -hmm. test, or if it's, like, a crucial investigate, do it then. If it's a test that someone would get, like, absolutely bombarded by, like, someone gets a... Um, a Rotting, uh, rotting remains take three horror and they're like that's really bad you're like worry not friend yeah so like my opinion on it is if you feel confident that you're gonna know when to use it then like you clearly know how when to use it if you are not confident in when to use it just like fire it off on the first auto fail that has negative consequences mm -hmm. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> that that's that's a great way of looking at it anytime like it's like this is bad i want it to be good have it be good yeah the first time you can get like real value out that's not like justin said not the first investigate that fails you're like eh. but the first time someone's gonna fail at raw remains you have to only taking two horror or whatever like or like if someone has committed cards to a test and it's a valuable card mm -hmm. like a deduction or a, like a resourceful be like no you do this yeah 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 yeah, yeah sweet let's you, uh you have control the slides let's dive into <laughs> into core set travis yeah i uh, got the holy rosary i mentioned it's uh um you know your staple card a little more important for father mateo than other mystics i think because he has that four brain if you intend to use it um we have our shriveling which is our generic combat spell it uses brain instead of your garbage fist you know it's in the spells video Arcane Initiate, another man. It's just so many staples from the core set, you know. Yeah, we don't even like, we don't even need to like talk about core set anymore. We just like staple, stable. Yeah. Arcane Initiate finds your spells. Um, Drawn to the Flame is nice. It's just a, a solid purple card. Also, you should probably be in the purple staples with you. Mm -hmm. It's pretty generic, and <laughs> you just get two clues without making a test because your stats aren't great. Yeah, and then also like you test your brain most of the time on that thing. Yeah. Yeah. War protection is like a little bit odd where. For Father Mateo, you kind of want to be making more tests than usual. Mm -hmm. You want to be taking all the tests because you want to maximize the odds of getting the Elder Sign, which is a bit different for most investigators, but War Protection is still a good yeah, card. Do you know what doesn't have a test? Ancient Evils, and you can just say no to it. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a very good point. <laughs> uh, Flash that lets you investigate with your garbage book. Emergency Cash. Purple cards are expensive. Yes. We do have some solid options for economy now, but like they are scattered throughout the card pool, so mm -hmm. this is still a solid choice. Guts, um, honestly, probably a staple for Father Mateo. Make that brain better. Give you a little more card draw. Um, Perception is an option for him as well, um, especially if you have again have that limited card pool. Of, for example, just like the core set and Forgotten Age, mm -hmm. and maybe one other cycle or something like that. Lets you just get a couple more actions in that actually do something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I might as well finish these. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll do uh, by cycle until we get to Innsmouth. Yeah, okay. 
We got uh, Manual Dexterity, boost that foot up to 5, that's a solid number for uh, Evasion and for Mythos tests. Unexpected Courage, it just fits wherever you need it. And then we have Grotesque Statue, which is a very good card mm -hmm. for Father Mateo. Uh, all this token manipulating stuff is exceptionally valuable for Father Mateo, especially in conjunction with the Sealing cards, where you can manipulate the Chaos. It's all about just seeing the Elder Sign as often as you can, right? Yeah. This, this basically doubles your chance to see the Elder Sign on four different tests. And you might be thinking, I saw no Bless cards there. And you would be right. You're right. <laughs> That's one of the things we noticed when Father Mateo came out. We were like, huh. It's going to be a while. It's going to be a while till we get some off-color blesses. All right, so we got Rite of Seeking, uh, the level 0 and the level 4 version. These are both in the spell videos. We're going to see this spell tag a lot. You can find us talking about these spells in greater detail and why you might choose one over the other in that in the links down below. Yeah. Ritual Candles is a nice little hand slot item that kind of just makes your stats a little bit less bad mm -hmm. because you can probably compete with the tokens if you get like a plus one to it or like a plus two if you're holding both of them but you are actually like father mateo has some built-in hand slot um wants with his codex of ages uh so but i still think running two ritual candles especially with a smaller collection is great because it's still a brain symbol as well yep. delve too deep is a staple more victory at the cost of encounter nice. cards yeah Good. defiance this is a nice card because when like, so basically, like, when you look at the uh, auto-fail as a card you don't need to worry about... Token. Uh, sorry, a token you don't need to worry about. Mm -hmm. This basically can turn another one of those tokens into a token you don't need to worry about for a test. Yep. And that allows you to make... Take bigger risks on your tests than you would otherwise. That's, like, where the true power of Father Mateo's ability is, is you can kind of just be like, this test is going to happen if I get my number high enough because nothing can stop me. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Defiance isn't, like, a great card, but it's okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when you get into the layer scenario. Like, level 0 in particular. The level 2 one is, like, pretty solid. Yeah. Level 0 one, like, when you get into layer scenarios, there's usually two or three of them that are going to consistently fail you or be, like, dangerous. But uh, even heading into, like, the mid-game scenarios, there's usually only one of them. Like, the yeah. squid or the tombstone, that's really going to screw up what you're trying to do. Does, I imagine the value, especially in the level 2 version, goes up if you're planning on playing as hard as well. Because mm -hmm. then you can just be like, nah... No, no thanks. No, 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 no. We have the three and five shriveling spell videos. You can see them there. We also have Relic Hunter and Charisma. Uh, Relic Hunter accessory slots are, uh, they're on the up, and they're on the up even more if you are a mystic. You mm. know, two holy rosaries is still a hell of a drug. Yes. Uh, <laughs> don't say no to it. If someone in like a, like a trench coat offers you two uh, holy rosaries, you go, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, spend your five experience on this, and then uh, just roll up with like two holy rosaries and your coax ages. You got seven book at level yeah. one you're like yeah and then you bump up those holy rosaries to the upgraded ones oh yeah. my god i uh, know we got charisma if you want more allies but you probably do because allies are also good you'll know when you want these like we're like they're not they don't go into every deck yeah, but I, think, like, I think charisma is less valuable for mystics than it is for other classes agreed usually there's like one ally you want yeah but yeah and then we got the jewel variolus which is a sick card i think in father mateo and i think if you want to play this you should still i think get relic hunter and you know like have your holy rosaries also be in contention it's like to do things yeah and like this thing is just like after you reveal a bad symbol you can or <laughs> sorry after anybody at your location it just always yeah. gets better i always forget about that uh you can exhaust and draw a card to gain two resources and that's just like like once again like father mateo's thing is token manipulation or treating tokens as positive effects in a way that like, I think Jim Culver wishes he could. Father Mateo can actually just, like, kind of just, like, turn all of them into kind of something positive, and this is a step towards getting there. Yeah. All right, Carcosa. Uncaged Soul is a mystic staple. Uh, two brains and economy is great. <clears throat> David Renfield should have been a mystic staple, but, hey. Plus one brain at level zero. There aren't, I mean, yeah, there aren't actually that many ways to do that. Um, Father Mateo does have his codex as well, but other than that, it's basically your accessory slot that gets you there. <laughs> Um, and he gives you as much money as you could ever want, and then you kill him. Yeah, <laughs> then he dies. Yeah, and then he dies. Uh, Storm of Spirits is a solid combat spell if yeah. you need to kill lots of little things. can be campaign-dependent, probably. St. So Hubert's Key is another uh, good accessory option for Father Mateo. Um, he has a Mind the Mass 2 Sanity, starting with 8. Uh, plus 1 Brain is what you want at your accessory slot, and then plus 1 Book is a solid addition if you intend to use that a little bit. And push them up to four. No, it is more expensive at four resources, so. Yeah. We have our Spirit of Tame here. This one is uh, okay for Father Mateo, especially in the earlier campaigns that have, like, weaker enemies. Um, 
It lets you get plus two value on your spell cards, and then also you can fight with plus two punch, which is nice for chipping off that last health of, off of your uh, Serpent of Yig or whatever it's called. Um, so you don't have to spend another Shriveling Charge on, something like that. Or just picking off rats, like I said in the earlier campaigns that have weaker enemies. Level 2 War Protection, this one is where it's at, where <laughs> you get to cancel any Ancient Evils. It's good. Uh, upgraded Arcane Initiate is just Arcane Initiate, but... Like, strictly better, but like... <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, the, the nicest thing about it is that it's zero, and you can play it at any time. Like, you probably still want the Horror Soak on this, so you probably... I, like, I usually still time it for a Doom flip, mm -hmm. but... I mean, it, this one can't... If you're playing Arcane Initiate in your deck, this can be a pretty okay late-game uh, upgrade. Oh, yeah. Especially if you have, like, taken trauma from some of your permanents. Oh, yeah. And then taken... Because you're, you're missing, like, I got eight or I got nine. Then, you know, you take two from your Arcane Researches. Maybe you took one off of... Uh, in the thick of it because you're the greedy piece garbage and then you know you take like two throughout the campaign it's not going so well and you're like hmm and you roll into the last scenario with like you know three four five yeah. sandy this is a good way to supplement that yeah definitely uh time warp is a solid support card just do a thing again well undo a thing and, <laughs> and then, then maybe do it again yeah <laughs> Yeah, this one's got a lot of rules ambiguity, but just, like, do it the way you think uh, it Yeah, works. honestly, that's, like, because when someone, like, I never even thought about someone doing this, like, saying, like, what do I, what happens if, what about if I do this after a delve too deep and it kills an investigator? I'm like, you need to go read a book. Just don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> or just, honestly, just do it as you want to do it. It's the best way of working this card, because that's, you know, but, it's, it's a time warp. Time change. It goes back in time. If we, when I play with my family and we have a rules question that I can't find the answer to, you're just not allowed to do it. That's fair, yeah. 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 <laughs> and we got Steel of the Elder Sign. Um, card is a little bit out of class these days, but still very, very good with Father Mateo. You just get a star. Yeah, just get a star. Yeah, it also gives you a wild, which is kind of neat. I guess they put that there so you don't have to have the text can be committed to any kind of test. But Actually, yeah, probably, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Also a spell so you can dig it out with your arcane and shit. Yeah, and also expert for our expert investigator who's going to be coming one day in the future. Yeah. Jockstone! <laughs> can you do this one? Yeah, this is the keys. Um, lot heavy competition in the accessory slot with the mystics. Um, but luckily this one also gives you plus one brain. Yeah. So that's pretty good. And then plus one to a few other things too. Uh, just the plus one brain's the important one. Don't, you don't need to worry about the other ones. That was a weird <laughs> uh, glitch there. Alright, we're at Father Mateo's home cycle. So you might be thinking, is there going to be some things he can use? And yeah, there is. Yeah, there's purple cards there's, in the cycle. There's uh, Miss Arella, though, zero and four. These are the evade spells. Once again, we talk about those in great detail in the staples video for spells. We have the Chthonian Stone. This seals one of the bad tokens. And after you reveal an uh, auto-fail token, uh, token during a skill test, return the Chthonian Stone to your hand. So this kind of just, like, once again, does that thing where it's just removing bad tokens from the cup. Yeah, Father Mateo really suffered from them using this as the seal thing as his sort of mechanic. Mm -hmm. Where he doesn't, he doesn't, like, actually care, directly care about sealing things. Yeah. He just cares about increasing the odds of the bag so he gets the star more often yeah but they also didn't really print any support for that in the cycle either yeah yeah you got the survivor treatment for sure yes yeah, this, this forgotten age actually feels like they kind of just had a bunch of car ideas and they dumped them together and they yeah. didn't really print yeah, support they, for the yeah there was like leo well, i mean like uh yeah because i mean ursula got i think ursula was the best supported in her cycle she did get like a decent amount of relics yeah yeah, yeah. and i think uh, yeah, no, it's it's very true. It is kind of it is. I mean, there's good like, other card designs yeah. in there. Like it. there could, there's good cards in Forgotten Age, but yeah, yeah, that is very true. Speaking of good cards, we have Arcane Research. It's a staple. Cards phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, all of McBride. When you reveal a Chaos Token, exhaust a real three and choose two of those tokens to resolve and ignore the other. This basically just says, hey, do you want to maybe hit an Elder Sign and who cares about the other token? Yep. Come, come on, <laughs> let's go. Uh, I think this would be, I have not played a uh, Father Mateo like this, but I think this would be a very fun Father Mateo to play. Just like every turn, try, try to just get an all of McBride. Use all of McBride, flip the the uh, Elder Sign and the auto fail, turn the auto fail into an Elder Sign. Yeah. <laughs> Two Elders, you, revol you resolve them both. Yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Uh, we have Premonition. This is uh, a cool card that's just very easy to slot into your deck when you have a smaller collection. And I do think what you said previously is that we were playing it kind of wrong. Where it's like one of those things where it was like, hey, I'm going to play this at the start of the player phase. 
who wants this to is actually it? like butterfly effect it is but it's like, like butterfly effect better. yeah you just put uh, you play it uh before you commit cards during a skill test because there's a lightning window there and then you okay. see oh i'm gonna need exactly this card yeah. right the important skill test yeah it's not that we were like playing it wrong before where we just played the start of the player phase and we we're like who can do something with this token and kind of planned our turnaround on that that's a use for it it's just we only used it for that really so yeah yeah because then most of the time it ends up being just like, I guess I'll go, I can pass this test. Right? Yeah. And it didn't feel as... Yes, yeah, somewhat recently I got over the mental block that like, and you realize that play during any lightning bolt player window means you can play during tests and during the mythos phase and stuff like that. And I was like, it's caused me to reevaluate a bunch of cards. Yeah, definitely. You can play it when enemies move in the hunter phase. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we have protective incantation. Uh, this seals any token except the auto fail, so you can seal the elder sign if you're feeling a little bit spicy. spicy yeah. Keep uh, out of the serpent's grasp. Yeah, two. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have that. Uh, two in play. Uh, there's limit two in play, and you basically have to pay a resource every turn, or it gets discarded. So this is a good way to once again kind of just. Uh, take tokens out however be aware it does take up a spell slot which is kind of like how you're planning on do things so we often talk about like different archetypes and like the support style of play this is where that could find mm -hmm. a home can you pay for this with antiquary i still don't know <laughs> the binder <laughs> antiquary uh during this uh we've been spent to pay for relic no idea you must either i don't know <laughs> Read the card, don't know, so under the Travis home rules, it does not work. Uh, we got counter spell, fast play when a uh, bad symbol that's not the autofill token is revealed during a skill to your location, cancel that chaos token. Just more of this kind of thing where, you know, you don't care about the symbols in the bag. It's blessed. It is blessed. It's also, uh, you, that's the worst when that happens, when it's in their color. You're like, why though? And you're like, come on. <laughs> Uh, like, it's not even flavorful, man. No. I no. guess it's got the star on it. But then why is it seal the other sign blessed? Yeah. yeah. Because then Father Mateo could have two reasons to play it. Nope. Only one. Only still, because it's zero <laughs> to three. Recall the future. Uh, this is a great card that allows you to uh, always f just be like always minus four. This, yeah. I call that card the always minus four card. Basically, like, the, if there's a token that would cause you to fail, it's you basically get a lucky for that token yeah. once a turn. If it's revealed. I usually picked a squid. Yeah, squid's a good one, too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the upgraded defiance. You ignore effects on all non-autofail symbols. Just nice and clean. Yep. Crystalline Elder Sign, you seal the plus one or the Elder Sign symbol, and you probably mm -hmm. want to seal the plus one. You just get plus one to all of your stats. Yeah. yeah. So you're basically taking that plus one and committing it to each one of your tests yeah. is essentially how that's working. Which, like, it might make your teammates kind of salty if you do that because then they can't get the plus one, but they shouldn't be making tests relying on the plus one to begin with, and you are 100% going to get more value out of that plus one for every test than they yep. were drawing it. So. Yeah, because yeah, the plus one is essentially a zero. It should be a zero. Yeah, until they go pound sand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. Shard to the Void, this is a really cool uh, kill spell that uh, it's basically you seal zeros on it and you can spend zeros on it to attack if you don't want to spend charges. And then you get plus two for each zero on it. And then you also get for each zero one, it seal for each zero revealed, you get to seal it on Shard of the Void or deal additional damage. It's a very fun spell. It's a cool spell, but man, every time I look at it, I'm like, man, I'm just going to play Shriveling and pay one experience for it. <laughs> that's the downside. That's that's the true downside of it, but the card is, like, it is fun to play with, and it is actually a good card, but, like, Shriveling's just more consistent and reliable. Yeah, we, we were so hyped when this card came out. Shards of the Void? Yeah, we man. were like, it's a combat spell in <laughs> Shriveling. No, I mean, we're, we're, we're recording our fucking... Uh, um, list video about mystic defining cards today and yeah. oh my god i was just like i'm gonna put shriveling on my list because <laughs> it's lets you do things yeah seal the seventh sign is a four cost five experience spell and ritual takes up the slot seals the auto fail token wow. you heard that right and it uses seven charges seal the seventh sign has no charges or if least play removed from the game uh Man, like look at them. That was like some good future proof in there. It was. Just like none of that. After uh if uh basically you reveal a bad token so that's not the autofill because it's not in the cup, you remove a charge from seal. After anyone, sorry, after anyone reveals one of the tokens. So you remove the autofill for essentially seven tokens, but you could put more charges on it. There's also some fun things you can do now with like the upgraded on Cage the Soul where if it's down to one charge, you can discard it. Oh no, if it leaves play. 
has no charges or if it leaves play. I thought it was only if it leaves play with... So scratch that. Put more charges on it and there's a lot of synergy there. They printed a lot of cards in this cycle to make Father Mateo not do anything. That that was the problem with Father <laughs> Mateo. And that's like when we did the first... Uh, like, you care about the other fail? Get it out of the bag. You care about the star? Get it out of the bag. Don't draw on that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is very true. But look at this! An off-colored bless card. They exist. Alter you think that, that one got stuffed in there at the lot? They just... Put yeah, they put blast on, on it. it. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, <laughs> this is a really good card, though. Uh, Alter Fate is, it can just do a lot of heavy lifting in a way that you'd never expect mm -hmm. it to, and then you're like, wow, that was really nice. And uh, you're play with it. <laughs> choose and discard from play a non weakness treachery that is not attached to an elite enemy. Get rid oh, yeah. of a Frozen in Fear. Get rid of a Buried in Sand. Yeah. You grief your teammates. They go, like, yeah, I'll test your, uh, your stupid dreams of Rillian, and you're like, I'll kill it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really, oh, okay. that's really funny. <laughs> that's so funny. All right, on to uh, Cyclone Dun. Dun. Deny existence. Uh, purple staple card. Bad thing happens. It don't happen. Easy. Prophesy is a solid option for um, just like more unexpected courage if that's something you care about. That is sometimes more and sometimes less. Sun Magic is an okay hand slot card. Uh, if you've noticed, we don't have a ton of competition for those hand slots, and we have lots of competition for those arcane slots, and this lets you trade one out. Solid choice. Uh, we have Wither and Sixth Sense, both of which are in the spell videos. They basically let you fight or investigate, like, kind of bad with your brain, but an infinite number of times. So, um, Dan Esperance is our first upgrade card here. She has secrets, and you can attach a non weakness spell event from your hand to her. Limit one event attached to her. And then you can play it uh, as if it was in your hand. And you don't put in the discard pile. Uh, and then as additional cost to play the attached event, exhaust her and spend a secret. She's worded really weird. Mm -hmm. If it remains attached. It, remain, if it, it remains attached, yeah. Oh, it remains attached, yeah. okay. Yeah. I like duplicated the, the word it and looked like an if from here. I was like, why wouldn't it remain attached? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess if it kills her, but... Oh uh, yeah, no, a solid way to get extra value out of your spell events. Yep. Um, something like... There's some really strong spell events. The existence 5, yeah, that's yeah. a fun one. We have Hollowed Mirror, which is, uh, wow, an, uh, another off-color blessed card. And also just like a really good card, too. Yeah, it's a shame it takes up your, your accessory yes, slots. Yes, that is a shame. But just play no test Father Mateo support. You yeah, know, you can. Good. You can, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this one, you put three copies of Soothing Melody in your deck. One goes to your hand, there two get shuffled in. And then if the Hollowed Mirror leaves play, the Soothing Melodies also leave play. Mm -hmm. Soothing Melody is a zero-cost event that heals two damage or horror from any, or any combination from among investigators and or ally assets. Your location, draw a card. Great healing card. Um, actually, you know, like, I, I think this card is not a great healing card. I think it's a good healing card. And it only really shines because it's in Guardian. Yep. These Guardians don't have the competition for their, arcane, or for their accessory slot. And they also, like, ha quite frequently have downturns where they can't afford to play these. Yeah. And they also just like passively want to look for items in their deck. Mm -hmm. Like if they're if you're running a backpack, you're probably going to play one of you're probably just going to put the hallowed mirror in and not think about it. Yeah. We have four of cups. This is the purple tarot card plus one brain. Good. More brain. Good. Wow. More blessed cards. Grizzly Tom level three. Um, after you commit a skill card to a skill test, you exhaust Grizzly Tom. That card gains another instance of one of the skill icons of your choice. That skill test fails, return that card to your hand. Oh, that's kind of neat. Do you know what it does? It turns that one seal this uh, elder sign into a unexpected courage. <laughs> if the skill test fails, you get it back. You get it back, baby! Let's go! Or, like, you would if it didn't remove itself yeah. from the game. That is true, yep. Darn. <laughs> Oh no, more no, serious this this can be like an again for that sort of support ye Father Mateo build, if you wanna just like throw skills to your teammates, this is an option for that accessory yeah, slot. I mean Make Astronomical Atlas is a good card. It is. And this is a way that you can just take yeah, this further is a good advantage support of it. for that. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of those new cards I haven't really considered in the yeah. decks of old investigators. Yeah. So who would have thought? There's a lot of cards in Arkham, and it takes, like, to, like, fully play an investigator to, like, through a campaign, you're like, okay, that was three weeks of my life when we're the way we record. Yeah. <laughs> Who's next? I got through two cards that I wanted to look at today. Yeah. Uh, we got Fortune of Fate is a blessed card. Uh, just eats a doom that would put on, be put on a card, and then exile the Fortune of Fate. Solid card for the last couple scenarios. Mm -hmm. 
And you catastrophe, fantastic card for Father Mateo. Um, probably like the first like really like blessed card that he actually wants outside of his color. Like Alter Fate's good, but it's not something that's like integral to his gameplay. You catastrophe is like. Whew. It's basically more uses of his printed ability. Yeah, game's like all fail. You're like, no man. Yeah, I, I'll do, I'll take I'll turn three of those into positives. I'll please. do it and then get an extra action, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have upgrade wither and six cents. They just do more of. I mean. They sometimes do more of the things. I think these cards are a little bit better in Father Mateo than other, or have a little bit more value in Father Mateo than they do for other Mystics because, uh, especially if you're playing the ceiling package and like the token manipulation stuff, where you can dig for uh, mm -hmm. the other sign. If you don't find it, you can take one of these symbols that lets you pass and still get the bonus. Yeah, and I think a, a, a thing too is that. I think with something like this, if you're playing with these, you actually can be lighter on your accessory slot because mm -hmm. you could probably get by with just the codex or alternatively, like, you know, you could if you're using like Grizzly Totem or something like that, because these don't take charges, they're you're less upset if you miss, right? And you can kind of yeah, just those like, tests aren't as important. You can just ram your face into testing six. Especially like with especially with six cents, I think yeah. that'd be really good. Wither is still kind of there, but I think six mm -hmm. cents is notably really nice in Father Mateo. Yeah, I mean like Wither is I think if they're playing that kind of deck, it is fine. Yeah. And I mean, like, if you hit one of the bad tokens, mm -hmm. it is two damage. Yeah. Yeah. Effectively, yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe I'll try playing Father Mateo deck with Ascent. Yeah, do it. Because Wither came out and we were like, this card's shit. <laughs> we didn't play it. <laughs> there, I remember there was one time when I we had played the level four version and I drew the uh, one of the symbols and we killed the guy and we were like, let's go. And then we we're just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then we got Deny Existence level 5 here. If something bad would happen to you, you do the opposite. Wow. It's really Brain good. damage? Nah, heal. Discard cards? Nah, draw cards. Yeah. Lose actions? Nah, gain actions. Yeah, yeah it's just really good. It is really good. Dream All right, on to Dream Eaters. A Great nice, small, cycle, simple... Yeah, like, but the cards are really nice here. So we have Open Gate, uh, Myriad. Play only during your turn. You can have people move through them. Myriad means you get three copies of them in your deck. And so, like, basically, if there's an open gate here and an open gate here, as an action, you can move as if they were connected. Enemies yep. don't, though. They don't know how to work the gate. There's no, some, they don't. There's a little keypad on it. Scroll of Prophe Prophecies. The thing that Mystics, like, I think miss the most is, like, the economy side of their things, right? And, like, that's why... Um, I play this card a lot in Purple <laughs> Thanks. Uh, and that's why uh, Arcane Initiate, uh, for some reason in my head, my brain was saying Sorcerer's Apprentice, which is absolutely not true. <laughs> for some reason, that's what my brain was trying to tell me to say. But Arcane, that's why Arcane Initiate is played so much, even to today. Mm -hmm. Because it's just... Like, while Mystics lack card draw in their kit, they kind of have card selection is, like, their, bit, their yeah. card draw. Yeah. But this is just card draw, baby. And you get to it discard is. cards from your hand. It takes, up, like, it takes up a hand slot and an arcane slot. And you're like, whew. Yeah. It's a nice card. Mm -hmm. And you also can choose an investigator. So if you're loaded, you can give it to someone else. Yeah, I don't know how many times I've been making a Mystic deck and I was like, I have no way to draw cards. So I'm like, well, scroll of prophecies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Guess you're in, bud. Yep. <laughs> uh, we got Read the Signs and Spectral Razors. Two very good uh, Mystic good. spells. Incredible at level zero. Just fantastic stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, play them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, stargazing. This card's just kind of fun. It is. Yeah. Uh, you basically just get to shuffle one of these stars or right into the top ten cards in counter deck. When someone draws it, they basically they do your elder sign. <laughs> they do your full elder yeah. sign. They draw a card, gain a resource, and may take an immediate action as if it was their turn. Just mm -hmm. turn a bad thing into a good thing. Yeah. Uh, Lucid Dreaming. Choose a card in your play area, reveal a card in your hand, search your deck for another copy of that card, and draw it. Shuffle your deck. This can fit into a lot of packages if you're trying to get like multiple pieces of something into play. Um, like Probably not open gate, but you could. But like a good example that I can think of off the top of my head, and Travis probably has something too for including this, but like mm -hmm. like if you're doing like a ceiling archetype, you can find more pieces to seal with. You can be like, I'm gonna grab another one of these, get that going. I'm gonna grab another one of my spell. Basically, like it's another form of word of command, but you just have to have the card already in play to get there. Yeah, it's really good. It's like a pseudo reload for your uh for your spells, like your shriveling is just sitting there with no charge in it, and you can be like, I'll go get the other one and replace it. Yep. Um, I think that's the biggest sort of use case for it. Um, aside from putting together myriad stuff, which Father Mateo doesn't actually do really. So, uh, it is nice with some of the blessed stuff in spite of his um, card pool, but Mateo does have, uh, unfortunately, kind of limited blessed pool. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and this lets this kind of helps supplement that a little bit. It's also a spell, which is really nice to be able to dig out with all your mystic stuff that cares about that. Like word of command, <laughs> word of command, get lucid dreaming. <laughs> uh, so just name a spell card, search your deck for a copy of it, draw it, shuffle your deck. Yeah, make sure you know what the cards in your deck are named. <laughs> yeah, so you're gonna find my sorcerer's apprentice, Justin. You doing okay? <laughs> all right, we're into Innsmouth. Okay. No Innsmouth bumper. We're talking about a bunch of blessed cards. Look at how many not purple cards there are here. Yeah, there's like only three of them are purple. Wow. wow. Uh, first up, we got Book of Psalms. This is like one of the few, relatively few ways that the blue card, blue blessed archetype has to get tokens in the bag at level zero. Um, you spend a secret to heal a horror from a vascular location, which is fine. And then you get to add two blessed tokens to the chaos bag, which is really what you're here for. Because if you're using this to heal a horror, like just pick something else, man. <laughs> like, especially if I'm a tail, if you want the horror healing, you might as well play like Clarity of Mind. Sunday, clarity of Mind, yeah. <laughs> um, it's also very on theme for him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's gotta be, right? Yeah. We have Rite of Sanctification, which is a very powerful um, economy option for the Blessed Decks. See up to five Blessed Tokens, and then when Investigate Your Location plays a card, so not just you, you can exhaust the right and release a token, so put it back into the bag. That's what release means, right? Yeah, I'm always a little. I always kind of forget. Yeah, and then make that card cost two less. Um, great supplementation to the sort of weaker mystic economy side of things. Uh, one thing, just to go back to the Book of Psalms and the flavor, one mm -hmm. thing that I found very enjoyable from a design perspective was that in our two expanded guides, the only two investigators that we talked about for the full cycle of Innsmouth was Sister Mary and Father Matteo, which I think oh. is a is a is a win on the, the uh, thematic design. I'll for just it. wait to do parallel, Wendy. That it will mean she is she will she's Jesus Christ born again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she gets the entire end of a cycle and like not much else yeah. outside of it. <laughs> a handful of good red cards, but uh, we have Hand of Fate, which lets you uh, dodge an uh, attack and then add blessed tokens equal to the combined damage and horror values, which is usually going to be like two, I'd say. Yep. Just like playing three money for that is pretty tough, but it's not that bad when you only have to pay one with Ray of Sanctification. Yeah. So I think that that card is actually fairly costed. Ward of Radiance uh, relies on you having Elder Signs and Blessings in the bag, which, like, you want, um, and you just... It's Ward of Protection. Yeah, the, different. the math on it is actually more aggressive than you might think, though. Like, yeah. uh, from what I remember reading, it was something that, like, two Blesses in the bag give you, like, a pretty... Like, over 50% chance of hitting. Hmm. So it's... It's less, it misses a lot less than it hits if you're building at least even somewhat around it. Like, if you hit, if you play like a Keep Faith and then Ward of Radiance, you're probably 100% okay. Not literally 100%, but like. That is true. It's probably, probably like, like 70. 70. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're literally 70% okay. Um, uh, Tides of Fate. This is a blessed and a spell. Look at those keywords being relevant. Um, play during any lightning bolt window. Wow. Or at the start of a round. Uh, let's you replace all the curse tokens in the bag with an equal number of blessings. At the end of the round, you replace all blessings with an equal number of curses. This card actually, well, it looks like it doesn't do anything. I think is quite important to the design and development of uh, curse and bless decks with purple, because they're supposed to be balanced, um, sort of. Where you can put a bunch of blessings in and then leave them there in turn to curses for the uh, curse spell assets, if you want to play those. Uh, alternatively, you can play these you and your group can play the strong curse cards promise of power deep knowledge stirring up trouble faustian bargain but dump a bunch of curse tokens in the bag also this plays very well with um temp fate yep uh and then you turn them all into blessings and then you just seal them on your right of sanctification or whatever and the game is like give me those back you're like yeah because only the go? ones on in the in the chaos bag turn back mm -hmm. or get replaced rather yeah uh promise of power is plus four it's a lot Good card. <laughs> it's a good card. Uh, Keep Faith, Justin said, is a solid bless enabler. It's two money for four blessings. Mm -hmm. Really came around this card. I thought this card was just hot trash when it came out, but it it, it's it does. Solid. It has its purpose. Like you're only going to mm -hmm. see it in decks that care about bless tokens, and I think it's totally great for those decks. Yep. If predestined, uh, you commit to any type of skill test. If the test fails, you either put two blessings in or take two curse tokens out. Um, if you're really, really hard up for putting blessed tokens in the bag, this is an option. Um, but it doesn't, like, do anything, you know? Yeah, it does nothing. I think you could be able to commit two of these protests, but, you know, whatever. 
I think. We got Beloved. This is actually a really solid skill. Um, it commits for a brain, a foot, and a wild, which makes it like very valuable during the Mythos phase. Yep. And also, the wild lets you do it for like proactive tests during the Investigator phase as well. Um, if a blessed token is revealed during the test, you can remove bless Beloved from the game to just automatically succeed instead. Yeah, it's really nice. Like if uh, you're looking at like a blessed deck and you're down to your last two cards, you could easily mm -hmm. run this over guts and it'll do a lot more work for you. Yep. Yeah. All right. Temp Fade, this is just a staple in like any deck that wants bless or curse tokens. You just play it's during like any- Maybe Sister Mary. It's a maybe, right? yeah. Cause, cause she doesn't even have time getting blessed tokens. I'd, st I'd still run it just cause eh, like, then, fair. you know. I, I don't it does know. It just, like, not exist. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's fast. And also, like, if you don't need them, it's a while that you just put into a test, right? It's not just fast. You can play during a lightning bolt window, screw mm. up your teammates. <laughs> You're like, yeah, oh, I can't possibly fail this test. I have plus four. Oh, like, really? Oh. <laughs> Way to get your hand out of the bag, Bryn. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it just adds three, three curse, three bless, and then you replace the card. We have the three covenants that we can play. Uh, mm -hmm. Sacred Covenant, which is really nice. Basically, they're, they're all good. They're all good. I mean, um, yeah, they're just good for different things. Yeah. So Sacred Covenant, it uh, retains blessed tokens. You can return any number of blessed tokens revealed to the Chaos Bag, which mm -hmm. is very nice. Paradoxal Covenant, if both uh, a bless, bless and a curse token were revealed during this test, you can exhaust Paradoxal Covenant, and the test automatically succeeds. I don't know what happened to my voice there, but <laughs> just lost it. Uh, so yeah, this is the um, the paradox uh, archetype. Uh, we actually have all these archetypes further broken down into the videos as we go into detail of like what the aim I is. I think the paradoxical one is actually a Father Mateo deck. Uh, yeah, uh, it's got to be. It's got to <laughs> be. Uh, yeah, no, it's a fun archetype. I've actually played a Father Mateo deck with this. Uh, it's it's a good time. It's a good time. Uh, you also can like kind of like aim when you want to. Um, there's like moments where you can like, you don't need to do it immediately or you could do it immediately. Like if you're fishing for tokens or like if you're playing like the Eye of Dijin, which we're going to be talking about in the near future. Yeah, like if I'm a tail, you might as well just let it fire off and see if you get the other sign. Yeah, yeah. Because there is a blessing device that we'll get to. Yeah. And then we got Ancient Covenant, which is just fucking gross. It's a, uh, when it revolves a, resolves a blessed token, you do not reveal another token. You just stop. You're like, plus two, it's good. This is even juicier if you're playing an, mm -hmm. one investigator with Ancient Covenant and one with Sacred Covenant. Because if it didn't, if you don't need the token to pass the test, you just return it. You're like, let's keep going. Yeah, I think this the Ancient Covenant is like, I mean, they, they feel, Ancient Covenant is like objectively a stronger card than Sacred mm -hmm. Covenant, but they feel different niches. 100%. I think generally you prefer the Sacred Covenant for Father Mateo. I would agree. Because uh, if you're playing Blessed Tokens, you're pretty invested into the archetype. You want to keep them in the bag, and that's not something you have an easy way of doing. Yeah. The, the alternative is if, like, uh, when I would take mm -hmm. Ancient Covenant over Sacred is if I wasn't playing around with Blessed Tokens, but someone else on my table would, mm -hmm. was I'd probably just put in an Ancient Covenant just for two experience. Yeah, I mean, you could even just have, like, a little engine where you play, you know, Keep Faith yep. and uh, Favor of the Sun and Tempt Fate and Ancient Covenant. Yep. And you're like, I'm just going to scum some tests. Just going to pass three tests. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Radiant Smite, this is a sick card. You may use Brain instead of oh, yeah. Fist, thank God. When you initiate this attack, search the Chaos Bag for the three blessed tokens and seal them here. For each blessed token sealed, you get plus one skill value and deal plus one damage. So this is like a three attack, four damage. Yes. If it defeats the enemy, you return the tokens to the token pool, otherwise you release them. So you don't need to use this as your killing blow, because then you can no, get you all just the tokens chunk back. chunk a big boy for it and put them back, and you're yeah. like, yeah. It's very nice. Priest of Two Faiths, he's blessed, but he's also cursed. Mm -hmm. uh, after your enders play, add three blessed tokens to the Chaos Bag. At the end of the upkeep phase, you must either add a cursed token to the Chaos Bag or discard him. Honestly, you have so much soak, and like, not like soak, but like deny existence, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You could just like play Priest of Two Faiths as a slightly worse keep faith in addition. Yeah. And just like say, get out of here. And he plays really nice with a lot of purple cards too, especially if you want to play Paradoxical Covenant or if you're playing Tides of Fate. Yeah, he's very good for the Paradox. Yeah. yeah. Manipulate Destiny. Card I often forget exists. I was like, oh yeah, this guy. So you reveal Chaos, mm -hmm. chaos Tokens until you reveal a Curse, Auto Fail, Bless, or Elder Sign. If you reveal the Curse or a um, Auto Fail Token, deal two damage to an enemy at your location. If you reveal a Bless or an Elder Sign, you heal two damage from enemy location. This action does not provoke attack for opportunity. This card is actually a little bit kind of neat because if you're playing Codex of Ages, this is a guaranteed two damage. If yeah. you're not putting any other tokens into the that bag. might be why I made it here. I don't remember. Yeah. Because this card like. If you're just spinning the wheel, probably is not good. It is actually <laughs> funny because you're you're doing the furthest thing from manipulating destiny when you play this card. 
Yeah. You're kind of just like unless you have <laughs> unless you've taken the star out, you're just like. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, like this is actually like a good way to um, have some like it's it. Mm -hmm. It could be a potential button to have some uh, emergency support for dealing with your serpents. Yeah. Because if they show up, you're like, two damage. Get fucked. Can you, you go know? to the next slide for a second? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so you can use these with, like, favor of the sun, favor of the moon to just guarantee what you want. Which is probably the to intention. Reveal. Yeah, probably, yeah. When you would reveal. Yeah. Yeah. You're actually manipulating destiny, then. That is true, yeah. but that's that's the the favor of the moon to manipulating destiny there. Right. Because I mean, like as well, like I'm probably not. I don't really ever want this. I don't know why this is too experienced, to be honest. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, actually, no. In all fairness, too experienced. Like let's give it one experience. But like sneak attack is two damage. Uh, on is testless, right? Yeah, this could be like zero experience and cost two resources. I think. Maybe provoke tax of opportunity. Uh, if it had to have some sort of thing on it, like it'd have to be the enemy had to be engaged with you and not provoke a tax. Why not? You have to like flip a coin to see if you do damage to it or not. Yeah, but it's but Tesla's damage is like as we see it with the mm -hmm. um, explosive ward. There's stipulations for Tesla's damage at zero experience. I mean, like yeah, but you just you have to pay two resources and then you have to hopefully draw a curse or the auto fail. That is curse or the auto fail or the elder sign. Like without anything else, it's just like a heal two. Well, if you don't get the elder sign, then you don't. It, like in base token bag, this is just a coin flip whether you actually get the damage. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, oh, definitely. The healing might not be relevant. I just don't think. I, I understand why no. I think that like hurt. is the stipulation. Is what I'm kind of getting at. Mm -hmm. That's fifty-fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Cards just. Uh, I mean, I, I like the card is the if you're playing it with Codex of Ages mm -hmm. and like you're just like ensuring it, or with Favor of the Moon or Favor of the Sun. Yeah. Blessing of Isis. This card's really nice. If you reveal a second blessed token during a sk single skill test, exhaust it, cancel that token, and treat it as if it was the Elder Sign instead, and you return both of them. Very good. Very good with Father Mateo. Yeah. Yeah. You pass and you're like, I'll pass even harder and then take yes. another action. Yes. <laughs> uh, Holy Rosary, uh, level two. This card's really nice. Plus one brain. After you succeeded a brain test on a treachery, exhaust it. Add two blessed tokens to the chaos bag. Oh, yeah. Like, easiest way to spend your starting five experience if you're not sure what to do. Definitely. Yeah. And then, like, this goes up in value. And, like, if you're playing Circle Undone, this card is, like, a freaking winner. It really if you're doing is. the blessed archetype. Yeah. yeah. Shield of Fate. Uh, this one seals up to five blessed tokens. That's not Father Mattel. It's just a normal priest. It's just a normal priest. It's not quite <laughs> him, though. And then uh, you can exhaust it and release token to dodge an attack at your location. Mm -hmm. Pretty pretty okay. Not great, but pretty okay. You got the Eilogen. This is an exceptional. It's it's blessed, so you can play it. Oh, yeah. This one's actually like one of the spicy non-purple non cards you can play. Yep. So when you initiate a skill test, you can exhaust it to have base skill 5 for the test. And... If a blessed token is revealed, you get to ready Eilogen. If a cursed token is revealed, you get to take conditional action this turn. And if you reveal both, you get both. Um, honestly, like, good kind of regardless of what archetype you're playing. Mm -hmm. um, it's like plus one to your brain uh, most of the time. But, like, you can have it be, you know, a perception or a... Um, yeah, and because it's base skill value, you get, like... Man, all that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, you get all the bonuses, so pair this up mm -hmm. with Key of Yeast. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's pay your four experience. That's delicious plus one brain. Yeah. Yeah. I guess Spirit of Humanity. This is a great way for Father Mateo to keep the bag full of the tokens that he wants. Um, Purple has some very strong healing options now, especially with... Um... Man, I'm having a hard time with card names today. The good one from... Earthly Serenity? Yes, Earthly Serenity. Thank you. Uh, so you can keep the bag full of blessed tokens. If you, if you really do need the healing, you can throw some cursed tokens in the bag or use the cursed tokens to fuel your paradox or type or whatever. Yeah, very nice for that. You, know, you can load it up and then over a couple turns, swap them out with Tides of Fate, seal them. Lots of ways you can mitigate that. Watchful Peace is one of your big payoffs for that blessed archetype um, where you get to uh, search Chaos Bag, work cards in play for five blessed tokens and put them like get rid of them. And then you guys just... Don't draw encounter cards for a turn. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, Favor of the Sun here. Uh, you seal up to three blessed tokens. We kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, but uh, when you reveal a chaos token from the chaos bag, you can exhaust Favor of the Sun to reveal a blessed token instead. Um, very strong with the uh, Sacred Covenant. Very strong with like 
it's really good with blessing advices where you once yeah. you hit a blessed token you're like i'll just get another one take my elder sign and move yeah, on 100 percent. because then you basically just ensure three elder signs yeah hollow uh three experience three money this one makes you take 10 blessing tokens from the cast figure or probably. sealed on cards in play yeah Why is it word differently than a watchful piece? I don't I don't answer those questions anymore. What is it different? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Hollow's kinda spicy in the paradox, especially with that tides of fate, you know? You're stop, just like start trying to <laughs> <laughs> Start trying to move on, Justin. Why is it worded differently? <laughs> you know, I, 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 listen, I, I don't ask those questions anymore. I'm just along for the ride at this point. I'm like, wow, really? That's crazy. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can't do off a card and play is nice. Yeah. Um Rive Equilibrium is Pretty expensive at five experience, but if you're playing Taboo, it's only three now, which wow. is extremely sick. Um, <laughs> turn one, you can just dump all the tokens into the chaos bag, which is funny. Um, it's a good, like, it depends what you're trying to do. Whether you're t like, it's extremely good if, you know, you're rolling around with Paradoxical Covenant and you happen to have, like, two people who can both play Sacred, Co or who can both play Ancient Covenant, and then yep. you guys just live in the life. But, yeah. Um, you can also remove Curse and Bless tokens to heal X Horror from one card's your location, which is another solid option for it. Yeah, that is good. Yeah. No, it is, like, good. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not hard to heal four or five. Like, you can even just, you know, Tides of Fate heal three Horror with this. Yep. Not Tides of Fate. Tempt Fate. Yep. Lots of Fate. Lots of Fate today, Lots yeah. of Fate. Uh, we got Jacob Morrison. This guy is competition for your ally slot. He doesn't ready. Um, instead, he readies when you draw a blessed token. And he is, while well, he's ready, you can exhaust him for lucky. See, good. He's a good card. He's, he's good. good. Card. You have to be, like, in bless to really make him pop, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, like, you don't have to be hard in bless. Not like, that bad. how many luckies do you need to win the game? If the answer is, like, more than four. Just build a better deck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to spend six, six experience on Jacob Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then last we have Shrine of the Morai. This one is a one cost event that attaches to your location and has three uses. The attached location gains, so the because the location has it, anyone at your, that location can use it. It's a lightning bolt. They draw the top card in the encounter deck, exhaust Shrine of the Morai, and spend one of the uses to return up to two cards with a total combined level of five or less from their discard pile to their hand. It's a lot of words. It's a lot of recursion. It's a lot of very powerful recursion. Yeah, we've never played it still. No. Uh, well, I just... None of us want to be the guy It's my spends, job. It's my job. <laughs> yeah, Brian and I are going to spend six experience on something for you guys. Yeah. yeah. And for the other people. <laughs> I'm too busy buying lucky threes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, there's a lot well, of powerful... What am I going to do with this? Get back my lucky zeros? Yeah. It, it is a very powerful effect. It's just not, like, our group's play style. Mm -hmm. We see it going to cargo in the discard pile. We go, bye. <laughs> it's gone forever. Unless you're abusing it. Us, uh, mistake, Father Mateo can't play this. You saw nothing, Chet? <laughs> wow. I actually, I noticed there was an early another mistake later on that I actually got out, but I just missed that one. I was like, yep, ship it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're on to Edge of the Earth. Down the Rabbit Hole, it's a very good card. If you build around it, which you need to have to kind of when you're playing Down the Rabbit Hole. Yep. Uh, it's, at this point now, I think it's like an, a staple video with um, Arcane Research, but you just have to build around it in a different way. Mm -hmm. It's a good card. Heavy Furs, after you reveal a non auto fail symbol on a chaos token in your skill test you perform and deal one damage to heavy first cancel that token and reveal a new token i like this is kind of like some cheeky keep fishing out that elder sign <laughs> yeah. like you might be able to pass the test like you like it'll turn you to a potential to pass the test but also like turn in a squid into maybe an elder sign is a sweet anything deal anything else yeah it's a good deal <laughs> yeah i mean those it takes to the body slot and you don't have any competition for that it's a solid throw in yeah talisman of protection it's just a fast way to prevent <clears throat> damage or horror when someone would die you can put it under control of any investigator at your location it's a nice card it is a nice card astronomical atlas this is a juicy build around and one that we referred to earlier as we we're working with grizzly totem very well it works as a way to double up powerful skill cards but it also works very well as just card draw. Yep. Yeah. Be aware, though, if you're playing Delve Too Deep, uh, it gets stuck on there. That happened to me yesterday, and I was like, no. <laughs> I only have four cards under it. Yeah. 
<laughs> in the value. Uh, grounded. This is a. It's a composure. Soaks for two and two, which is like a very nice part of that card. It really is. Yeah, yeah. that doesn't just explode to one of them. Yeah, you get plus one skill value on spell cards. Non-direct hammer uh, damage or horn must be assigned to it. And during a skill test on a spell card, you can spend a resource. You get plus one skill value for this test. So this gives you plus one brain. Uh, and soaks for two and two. More most often. Yeah. 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 I think it's still like the least exciting composure, but it still is an option if you wanted to consider yeah, it's it. So, it's still solid. True magic. This is a one charge asset. Takes up a hand slot and a spell slot. You may resolve spell assets in your hand by revealing them from your hand. Treat true magic as if it was the revealed asset. Every time I've seen someone use six cents on this, I feel like they're cheating, but it works with six cents because I'm just like, wait, what do you mean? Those I had to spell the charge. Nah, because the charges are spent if the thing had charges. Yeah. So uh, it's really nice. It's just like kind of like the, I think this would actually be a really good option for that Wither deck where you never actually have to play Wither. You can just like, you know, have Wither in hand and fire off the Wither. Fire off the six cents that you're holding. Why wouldn't you just play the six cents? Uh, because if you're like, so it's like you're holding the true magic and the spell slot, and then like you have like maybe like you're playing like a like earthly serenity in that case, or like a brand of or a divination, like one of the things that uses charges, and okay. the one that doesn't use charges, you can just use your true magic on. So it's like it's like it's in play, you just don't actually have to play it. But you gotta have like other things, right? That you want to play with true magic. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. No. Yeah, yeah. A true magic deck requires you to probably play like every spell available to you. Like, you probably want at least, like, one of, like, at least four or six different spells. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because, like, the point about True Magic is not that it's good. It's that it's, it's like, free versatility, right? Because you don't have to, like, play your thing. You don't need to commit to... Yeah, okay. It's also, like, really good with stuff like Clarity of Mind, where you actually mm -hmm. don't need to, like, play it. You can just, like... And you never have to waste charges on it. You can just, you just like, have to use have it. Hand. Yeah, 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 exactly. I remember saying this is one of the cards I was most excited for out of Edge of the Earth, and I still haven't played it. That's just because it's kind of just like it does one thing. It plays your spells that you already are kind of like I was playing. Play anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, protecting the Nernic. This is a very fun card after an Alassi control is discarded or defeated by a card effect. Mm. Uh, either return it to its hand or probably draw three cards. Yeah, you put yeah. the ghost in the cup. Yeah, put the ghost in the cup. Uh, I think this also has some, like, you would want to return it if you're playing, like, David Renfield could be worth a return. Um,. Diana yeah. Esperance could be worth a return. She's a yeah. great return. Jacob Morrison, you just readied that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brandon Kathaga, uh one and four. Fantastic kill spells. Very good. We talked about them in the spell video. Mm -hmm. This one's a longer one, so we'll, we'll go back and forth. Okay. Uh, Divination <laughs> is in the spell video. Blur is in the spell video. <laughs> this is a very easy slide. <laughs> <laughs> Earthly Serenity is a very powerful healing card. Um... Level 1 version has 4 charges and has you test brain 1, and the level 4 version has 6 charges and has you test brain 0. And then on both cases, for each point you succeed by, you may spend 1 charge to heal a damage or horror from your location. If you succeed by 0, you lose uh, 1 or 2 resources. Um, you, you're probably not going to succeed by 0, though. It's unlikely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just incredibly powerful healing you know someone's limping along you're like come here and you just juice them full of like one heart and three brain or whatever they're missing and they're good to go again yep very good um then we have prophetic antiquary and sleuth these are the three talents that father mateo can play um they each have uses two resources that replenish the start of each round the resources can be spent to pay for three different traits cards and as lightning bolts during a skill test on one of those three different trait cards you can spend a resource to get plus one skill value for that test Obviously, the uh, the spell and the spirit and I think the fortune is also pretty valuable for like prophetic in general is just good because it's got spell, and there's a handful of spirits and fortunes that Father Mateo can play as well because they're blessed, I believe. Um, the sleuth one, charms, tactics, and domes. We have charms now with Scarlet Keys. It's kind of nice. Um, tactics and tomes. There's like a handful of them, but not oh, too yeah. many. Uh yeah. You Catastrophe is a fortune. Just yeah, having yeah. it always you Catastrophe mm -hmm. ready is really nice. Yep. And then Antiquary doing favors. You don't really have any of those, but Relics and Rituals are both something that you play quite a few of. Hell yeah. So. Uh, close the Circle. Uh, this is... Uh, uh, it's one of the synergies where it cares about the number of different... Um, classes of cards you have so the multi-class cards are really good with this uh and it comes with the charges equal to the number of classes you control 
uh, and you spend a charge and exhaust it. You take a basic action, and for each test performed in that action, you may use your brain instead of the skill indicated. Okay, go back a, a slide real quick. Okay, go forward. These don't, you can't spend your antiquated charges to get plus Sad. whatever, I don't think. I don't think so either. It's, it's not an action on that card. Yeah. Uh, I think this card is... If you build around it, more actions is rarely a bad thing, especially when you're using your brain for stuff. Yeah, I mean, these synergy cards are here just because Father Mateo has access to those blessed cards from other colors. It's not yeah. very difficult to have, like, Spirit of Humanity, Blessing of Isis, and, I mean, that's, that's three. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah. Uh, Enchanted Blow. Blessed. This is blessed. <laughs> uh, also mystic, though. Also mystic. <laughs> I mean... Uh, yeah. <laughs> this card is a great tool to, especially when you're feeling like a flex roll, to just pick things off. Mm -hmm. It is very, it takes up a lot of shit. It takes up a lot of your shit, but it can be very fun Why to play does with. does this take up the arcade slot and hammer doesn't? Great question. <laughs> great question. <laughs> uh, and then we have Call for Backup, which uh, is another synergy card, and depending on the number of different classes you have, you can do an exciting amount of different things. Yeah. yeah, a variety of things. All right, I'll keep this going into this one. That's good. I don't really want to talk about these cards. Oh, three spell... Uh, Storm of Spirits. You shouldn't probably have that tag. How did that little guy sneak on there? I don't know. Yeah, you what? did him. Yeah, I don't know. It's just weird that he got on. I guess that's just because I was like, spell, spell, spell. I did so many spells on the previous slides. I was like, every spell gets it. Right of Seeking, <laughs> Rissavella in the spell video. Storm of Secrets is just an upgraded version of the card we talked about earlier. And it's just like more damage and more brain boost. The upgraded Chthonian Stone, wow. it has no charges, you return it to your hand, and after you reveal an uh, autofill symbol, instead of it coming back to your hand, you remove a charge from the Chthonian Stone. Mm -hmm. And it also costs less. This is actually a really nice upgrade for the Chthonian Stone uh, deck build. It is. It's yeah. a, a great upgrade, I think, that they printed. And, like, if you're playing, like, planning on, like, playing this and, like, upgrading things, I think this is a, down a deceptively the good. Uh, sorry, I think the next one is a deceptively good downgrade as well. Yeah, yeah. so it's uh, choose and discard from play a non-weakness treasure that's not attached to an elite enemy. Uh, cost is higher, and it cannot be played as a lightning bolt. That's the differences, right? Oh yeah, the level 1 version like kind of sucks, but what this actually does is it lets you pay 1 experience for level 3 version with Arcane Research. That is true. That is true. I mean, that's like, very good. And, and even actually, even more too. Like, it's just, yeah, no, that's just, yeah, that's sick. If, like, even like if you're playing, like, you're not doing arcane research, but you want this, and you have uh, down the rabbit, down the rabbit hole, hole, it can be pretty strong. Like that your breaks thing. even though. Yeah, it does. Unless you start with them in your deck. Well, yeah, which you would. Yeah, if you were if you were doing that, you could. I think so. Yeah, I don't know how down the rabbit hole interacts with the extra experience. Uh, what do you mean, like? Like, so do you spend the experience after you've built your level? Yeah, so, deck? I, no, no, the deck, that's part of the same time. So it doesn't, the down the rabbit hole doesn't matter with those five bonus experience at the start of the game. Okay, so it won't also, I won't get the discount level of zero. No, no. Okay. Yeah, but you'll get it if you go from one to three. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, the hero font, this is, you have an additional arcane slot, and your arcane slots can be used to hold accessory slots and vice versa. This is really good for giving you a lot more accessory slots if you want those. Or if you want a little more arcane slots, it's another way of going about that. Yeah. Yeah. Sign magic, uh, three cost, fast. You have an additional spell slot, which is can be hold a spell or ritual mm -hmm. asset. And after you activate an ability on a spell or ritual asset, you can exhaust and activate an ability on another different spell or ritual asset you control without paying its action cost. This is like, I think... This is another card that I think is really good and I just haven't played, really. Mm -hmm. It's like an extra action return. It is, yeah. And it, it, like this is, gets especially good when you have like... Uh, mm -hmm. Say, for example, a uh, Sixth Sense or a Wither hanging out, right? And it's just yeah. like an always active option that you can use to take advantage of. Very good for flex style of gameplay, but also probably good if you're just forcing something too. Yeah. When they say different, do they mean like physically different or different by name? Uh, on a different... I think it would say like a different... Yeah, just different means different. So it has to be a different one. It can't be the exact same card. So I could use shriveling and then use different shriveling. That's my read of it, but I don't know for sure. Okay. Yeah, I, That's how I look at it. It's like a different... Because it would say like different by name. Usually they specify for stuff like Do that. Do they? I'm pretty sure I've seen it. That might have been a custom thing. I've played so much different Arkham that that sounds like I can't like recall any cards that care about that. Yeah, so. but... Um, oh, we'll look it up after. But I, I, for yeah. me, it reads as different. No. Uh, upgraded Halomir. Now you can turn the two into a three, or you can shuffle the card into your deck instead of discarding it. Wow. It's blessed. Level three. He can run yes. it. Yep. yep. 
Uh, Vesgear decks. We have Azure Flame Clairvoyance and Effable Truth are all spells, as well as the upgrade ones that are down below. They are like they're the this, other ones, but different. This is the. <laughs> this slide is incredible. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Uh, Robe of Endless Night. We play spell card, exhaust it, to reduce the cost of that card by one. You need to play like two spells with this probably for it to be worth it, because it also soaks two hearts, mm -hmm. um, which shouldn't be difficult. It takes up that body slot, which we've seen like almost negative competition for. Yeah. <laughs> it's like heavy first. Heavy first. <laughs> uh, we have Voice Raw. Very good um, economy option for Father Mateo if you're playing that token manipulation thing. And even better if you're playing with the new taboo for it that counts any symbols. Yeah. Where So if you flip bless tokens, you will also get resources. Oh, yeah. So like you tempt fate into a voice of raw and you have six additional tokens that are uh, worth oh. like two resources potentially. Very yeah. nice. Uh, the Ineffable Truth. The Evade Ones continue. As Travis said, you can find yeah. more down below. The downgraded Grotesque Statue. Uh, if it comes with three charges, when you reveal Chaos Token, spend a charge... Reveal two, choose one, and ignore the other. Thing costs one more and has one less charge is the difference. Yeah, sounds right. Yeah. Uh, the upgraded Robe of, Robe of Endless Night, it uh, it reduces the cost by one and does not provoke attacks opportunity. What's it costs one less and then it reduces, it, and then no attacks opportunity. Easy. Look at that. Uh, yeah. Upgraded Guts is now three brains if you want that sort of thing, and it mm -hmm. does two cards if you succeed by two or more. If you have Guts in your deck, this is a very nice upgrade if you're playing a down the rabbit hole deck probably put guts in your deck because the upgrade is just something you're just going to do in the future mm -hmm. and then we got hypnotic gaze which if you'll give me a second i'm going to just quickly read this card two cost uh -huh. fast uh -huh. two experience uh -huh. play with enemy attacks and oh it's just a dodge we have to reveal uh it dodges the attack no matter what and yep. then if you reveal a bad symbol you deal damage to the attacking enemy equal to its damage or horror. That's a fine card. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I think this card is like pretty solid for two experience. It's like if you have uh, token manipulation. If you don't, it's just like okay. Oh, man, but... I should play that in parallel, Agnes. That'd be a good time. Yeah, it would. Anything that costs two, you're just like free. put that in there. <laughs> Get that in. All right, we're done. Oh, here's the deck. This is a blessing deck. It looks like. Yeah. So our five experience went to the bomb there, and only three of it is denoted by the blessing of Isis, but the other two <laughs> is the sacred covenant. Good try, Justin. No! You're so close. <laughs> so close. Um, for our blessing enablers, we basically have we have keep faith, we have tempt fate, we have a singleton copy of Book of Psalms, and then we have uh, the tides of fate to go with our tempt fates to shuffle those cursed tokens into blessings. Um, we have a singleton copy of Sh Sign Magic. Take up one of our hand slots because we have a million arcane things we want to play and basically no hand slots. Those arcane things are like, you know, shrivelings for killing, clairvoyance for clues, and missive really in case you need to, in, to evade. Uh, that sort of, those spells there could really be a mix of kind of anything you want, um, if I'm being honest. They could even be like the, the Innsmouth Curse things. You've got a solid amount of curse generation here at level zero. Um... You know, it could be like two clairvoyance and two rave seeking and one missive rail if you need to be a clover or whatever. It's two around those numbers. And then we have our uh, right of sanctification as well as one of our main economy cards. Holy Rosary gives us that blurring that we need to use our spells. Arcane Shade actually finds our cards that do things. Deny existence, ward of protection, ward of radiance keeps you from dying. And then Guts and Promise of Power are just good skills. I'm just doing the sign magic research. Okay. Uh, yeah, overall, like it's a pretty basic Father Mateo deck. Lots of different ways you could take it. Uh, very easy to kind of cut the blessing stuff and just throw in other good purple cards if that's something you care about. Very easy to tweak it to be a fighter or a clover or yeah. support, I guess. So. It's always a good sign when we do one of these expanded guides, and I'm excited about the investigator. I'm excited to see what one of us, you or me, are going to play Father Mateo next with, because yes. it's definitely not Bryn. No. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it is <clears throat> just a different card by physical card. It can be the same card. Library, mm -hmm. dose, and specifies by title. Neat. Yeah, look Good at that. Tell. Mystery solved. Huge thank you to all of our patrons for supporting the channel. Uh, oh, what did I do? Oh, no, it just... Oh, every time that happens. There we go. It's, we're still Team recording. We're still recording. Uh... <laughs>
we'll be back. Uh, it's going to be a few weeks until we get back to the next expanded guide because Christmas is coming up, which means we have our individual investigator tier list coming your way, which I know people always like seeing. Uh, and then we're going to be talking about Ashcan Pete and Duke the Dog next. So that one's going to be nice and straightforward. This Check card, this red card, that's good. <laughs> this card can be discarded. <laughs> Winging it, you can play it from your discard pile. Wow. Let's go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>